Hey there, stampers. This is Sherry Roth with StampTreasures.com. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Shore Park, Alberta, and I am excited to be here to share some crafting with you. Um, I do this every Friday at 11 a.m., and um, we do something different every week. So be sure, if you're just joining in, be sure to say hi so I can see that you're here, or if you're watching the replay, whether it's on Facebook or um, on YouTube, be sure to say hi. If you have any questions, comment below. I'm happy to answer them, whether it's live or um, after afterwards. All right. Good morning, Kristen. Um, okay, let me update my screen here for some reason. Oh, here we go. And hopefully I have more success seeing comments today because the other day, the other day I could not see comments. They were not staying on the screen. Let's hope that they stay this time. All right, so I'm happy to be back. Good morning, Barb. I'm happy to be back this morning um, after a couple weeks where I wasn't able, they are not staying again. Okay, is anybody familiar with Facebook Live? Why? On my iPad, can I not see the comments come up just when you post them? Hey, Kathy. And then they disappear. On my phone, I can see the comments, which is not a problem when I'm talking to you face to face. But um, when I flip the camera around to craft, I'm not going to be able to see your comments. It's driving me crazy that they're not staying on the screen. Okay, if anybody have any has any tips on um, <laughs> how to fix that, let me know. Okay, we got lots to do today. Um, first of all, after being away for a couple weeks, um, I have lots of draws to do. So let's see here. Um, first up, we've got the last live that I did was these two cards here. So I'm going to draw for those. And remember, anybody who, uh, Kristen says it doesn't seem to be working. You had to turn your iPad to see the comments? Okay, let me try that. Okay, well, I can see them now. That's weird because I did it the other way before. Okay, that's fine. I can see your comments now, that's good. All right, um, now I lost my train of thought. <laughs> okay, we are gonna draw for this. So this was the, the last time I did a Facebook Live, which was April 5th, a long time ago. Um, we've got lots of comments and shares, so remember, good morning, Shara. Remember that to be entered to win the project that I make the current week, if you comment below, if you ask questions, comment, whatever, um, or if you're watching the replay, you can comment on YouTube. I always check the YouTube comments as well, um, and you'll have the opportunity to win the projects. And I do it this way because that way it doesn't matter where in the world you're watching from, um, you have the opportunity to win. So I've sent stuff as far as Australia, so that's kind of cool. Okay, so for these two cards, we've got Christine, Christine Miles, and I'll see her tonight, so I can pass that along to her. Okay, first one done, and then the next one we had was this fun fold, this one here, and I didn't write down the date, but it was whatever the Friday was after April 5th, um, and this was not a live. This was a pre-recorded YouTube video that I posted at 11 a.m. So I'm not sure if very many people watched that. There were not very many comments, but you still have the opportunity to win. So that means anybody who did comment has a better chance of winning. So let's see here. We've got Danette Linville. So she was a YouTube commenter, so I'll get in, get in touch with her. Okay, and then last one was last week's, and that was for this cute project. You're welcome, Christine, using the Love You to Pieces bundle. And again, it was a pre-recorded YouTube video. Not very many people commented, so Kathy Lovell, you're the winner. So I will pop that in the mail for you. All right, okay, now, uh, I just want to do a quick reminder about a couple things because we've got so much going on right now um, before we start crafting. Uh, let's see here. Today is the last day for you to sign up for the Love You to Pieces class in the mail. 
Um, and these are the four cards that we're doing here. So today's the last day to sign up for that. Um, and then we've also got, running out of space here. Um, we've also got the retiring lists out. Um, and they are better lists now than initially when I first posted them. So I, I will post the links to the retiring lists with the stamp sets that are marked with an asterisk. Those ones are, it says that they're retiring, but they're just being reconfigured to our new cling mount. So it looks like the list is really long and it is quite long, but if you remove those things with the asterisk, um, it's not quite as scary. I do have a lot of stamp sets that are retiring though. Um, the other thing that I wanna point out uh, is that the bundles are listed. So I don't know if you guys are aware, but whenever Stampin' Up! releases a bundle in a current publication, so whether it's the annual catalog, the holiday catalog, or the occasions catalog, the initial release publication, those bundles are available for 10% off. So even if those products are carrying over to a future publication, you won't be able to get them as a bundle anymore, which means that you can't save the 10%. So that's something to keep in mind when you're flipping through the catalog. If there are any bundles that you love or that have been on your list, I mean, you might as well pick them up now because you can save that extra 10%. Okay, good morning, Mary Liz. All right, um, let's see, do I have to talk about anything else? I think that's it. Okay, I'm gonna flip the camera around. Let's hope that I remember how to do this after a couple weeks and then we will get to crafting. Oh my gosh, I have to look at my cheat sheet. I think I do this. And then this. There we go. Okay. Okay, let's just adjust this just a touch. Okay, I think we're good. Oh my gosh. Okay, all right, so, um, I, we're using one new thing. I was, I was torn whether or not that I should use um, new product or old product or what to use. And I am not quite ready to dive into new product yet. I still wanna play with some old stuff, but I did throw in one new item that I'm very excited about that we're using today. Okay, good, happy to hear that it's working now. All right. Um, Oh, Barb is getting the well said one. Yes, because even though that was in a, just a short publication of um, the occasions catalog and both the stamp set and the framelits are carrying over to the annual catalog, they will not be available for the 10% at the 10% savings. And that is an expensive bundle. So it's definitely worth getting it and saving that 10%. Okay, so isn't this beautiful? I love it. I can't wait till it goes live. There's so many things in here that I want to get. And I can't share the inside with you just yet. Um, but what I want to do is I want to show you where I got my inspiration for today's projects. So I noticed that on the annual catalog, there are these two envelopes. They're kind of like coin envelopes on here. And there's a few more that are in um, sporadically through the catalog as well. So I wanted to figure out how to make them. So I did some playing around and I'm gonna share what I came up with you with you today. Uh, let's move this out of the way here. Okay, so I am using, I'm going back to the annual catalog and I am using the Rooted in Nature bundle. So it's this gorgeous stamp set. It's got two cases because there's it's so full and then coordinating framelits. So this is one of the items where it's bundle pricing um, until it retire, the bundle retires, and then it will go, both of them are carrying over to the next catalog. So they both will, will be available, just not at the 10% savings. Okay, so we're using that. I'm using the coordinating paper, um, Nature's Poem, I think it's called. And, 
and then a few other projects or products. The Nature's Poem DSP is retiring, as is all of the DSP. All right. Okay, so let me think here. Where are we going to start? Let's start with the... Let me show you what we're making first here. Okay, so here is the coin envelope. And then here is the card that we're going to create. So I'm going to show you how I created this. It's for a note card size. I do want to see if I can figure out how um, the dimensions and stuff for a full size card and also a little a smaller card because I thought that it would be really cute with a smaller card as well. So you'll I did had didn't have a chance to figure them out for today, but um, you can you'll see a future video coming up when I do get a chance to figure that out. All right, so we are going to do some splattering here. We're going to create this envelope. Do you recognize this shape? This is a new shape. It is a product that will be available in the annual catalog. It's called the Stitched Nested Labels, and they are beautiful. They're going to be super popular, as is anything with stitching on it. It's crazy popular. All right, and uh, let's see here. Yeah. So we're gonna we're also gonna use the stamparatus today. So let's go ahead and get started. We got lots of stuff to do. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do, I think, is the messy thing. So we're gonna create the card first, and then we'll go into the envelope afterwards. But we're gonna do the messy thing first, and that is our splattering. So I've got a piece of the Nature's Poem DSP, and this piece measures three and a quarter inches by four and three quarters. I'm just gonna grab a scrap piece of paper to put it down to protect my work surface. And then I'm gonna use my embossing buddy and I'm just gonna give this a little wipe. And what that does, because I'm going to be using gold embossing powder. Now there's a few different ways that you can do this, but I'm gonna show you this way um, and I'll explain the other ways. Um, so I'm using gold embossing powder and what the embossing buddy does is it takes any static off of the powder, the paper or any oils from your fingers off of the paper so that the embossing powder only sticks where you want it to stick. Okay. So then what I've got is I've got a little empty embellishment container with just water in it and I've got a paintbrush. You can use your aqua painter for this as well. Um, and then I've got my gold embossing powder. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to just wet my paintbrush. I'm going to get it quite wet. And I'm going to splatter. And I love splattering. I do it more on my scrapbook pages than I do on my cards. Okay, so then I'll just set that aside. And I kind of went at an angle like this. And then I'm going to sprinkle it with embossing powder. I'm going to be quite generous. Look at all the bits of bits and pieces of things I have in here. Okay, and then I'll pick that off, pick that up, tap off the excess. And then I will, can you guys see that? I will take that over to my heat tool and emboss that and it will end up looking like this. So even just using water, water because it's moist and the powder sticks to the moisture, you can create that spread, that splatter effect, okay? Now I didn't emboss it on camera because I only have two plugins that are close to me and um, they are both being used. <laughs> so um, I pre-did the piece for you, all right? So that's what it looks like after you emboss it. So you do wanna be relatively, like if you were doing this as a swap and you were doing lots of them, you do want to be relatively quick because you don't want that water to dry because otherwise when you go to put that heat tool on there and it's probably just going to blow it right off, okay? But I found that just doing it like that, it works perfectly. The other way that you can do it is if you have our gold shimmer paint, which I know two colors carried over and I can't remember which two colors. I don't think it was gold, um, but it may be. I, 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 for some reason, I don't think it is though. Um, but you could use a paintbrush and gold shimmer paint and splatter. Um, what else could you do? If you have our retired gold wink of Stella, you can squeeze that until that moisture comes to the tip and you could splatter with that as well. So there are several different ways that you can do this, but using the stuff that I had on hand, this is how I figured out to do it. Gold retires. Okay. Thanks for cl clarifying that, Kristen. 
Um, Shara asks, could you go back and emboss in a different color after the gold? Uh, yeah, you could. Like if you wanted to, if you went and you embossed this in gold, and then you wanted to add more splatters, and add maybe some silver or some copper, you could do that. You'd probably have to add more splatters, unless you're really, really quick, which would be really hard with small images like this, um, or small little areas like this. Sometimes you can do a second layer if you're really quick and you sprinkle the powder while it's still wet. But like I said, these are such tiny little pieces and they're not in a concentrated area. So you might have a problem doing that. So I would sprink, splatter again with water and then add a different color. Does that help, Shara? Okay, so now on to the other pieces. Let's do our stamping next. Okay, let's set that aside for now. Okay, so I am gonna take two, or this leaf image, and I'm going to stamp two of them in Mossy Meadow on Mes Mossy Meadow cardstock. And then there's a framelit to cut this out. Okay, we'll do all our stamping so that I can do all the big shotting all at the same time. So we'll do those two and then I want to stamp You Are Wonderful and I'm gonna do it in soft suede ink. I have this going the right way and I'm gonna stamp it so it's a little bit closer hang on let's get the framelit out that I need first make sure I get this in the right spot uh, I think it's this one yeah okay so I used I haven't numbered mine yet so one, two, three, four, the fifth smallest for this one. Okay, so if we put this here, I want it to be kind of in this lower corner. Okay. And then we'll pull in the big shot and do our cutting. Let me grab the framelit that I need from this. here so on your framelit sets here's a little a little a, another little tip here um, so any of these open dies are meant to cut anything that is closed like this with the detail that's solid like this those are meant to emboss okay so just so you guys know I always like to when I get my framelits I always like to run them through with some scrap paper and just see exactly what they look like because then that way it gives me an idea of what to expect when I'm cutting. And it helps have that reference so that I can plan or when I'm planning my projects. Okay, so I'm gonna move this over and this is gonna go on like this. And I'm not too concerned that it's going to cut off some of the wonderful. So that's gonna go on like that and then this guy on here. So I'm sure everybody has seen peaks at some of the new products in the new catalog. Is there anything that anybody is super excited about? Mary Liz says the peacock bundle, yes. I think a lot of people are excited about that. The colors are just stunning. All right. Okay, so now we can move this out of the way. Okay. 
Okay, so now I think we have all the pieces that we need. The other thing that I did was I already pre um, stamped and fussy cut. I did the You Are Wonderful on a piece of Whisper White cardstock and then I just kind of fussy cut around it. Kristen says she's excited about the stitch shapes that I was using, to, I'm using today and the birch tree background stamp. I know that background stamp is beautiful. Okay, so I've got a note card here and our note cards come, they are smaller than our regular size cards um, and they come in a package of 20. You get 20 cards, pre-cut and scored cards and 20 envelopes. They're fabulous, it, fabulous. If you're looking for quick and easy, our note cards are definitely that. Um, okay, so now what I wanna do is I wanna take some linen thread and I've got my embossed piece here and I am going to wrap the linen thread around twice I'm going to tie a bow off to the right so when I tie my bows I always have to put them upside down so that my the ends of my ribbon are going down That's just the way I tie. Oh, I say that and now it's <laughs> it's going up. <laughs> okay. All right, I'll give this a little trim. That's not very tight, that's okay. Yeah, lots of lots of comments about the peacock. Okay, so I'm going to add some adhesive to this and add that to my card front. Oh, and actually I should do one more thing before I go any further. Okay, so I'm just adding that to the center. And then I want to stamp the inside of this card. So before I start adding too much bulk, I'm going to pull in my Stamparatus. Let's see here. Okay, so I've got it set up. Now, how did I use it yesterday? I think it was like this. Okay, so I'm opening my card and I'm gonna use the magnet to hold it in place. And I've got this lined up so that the words read, words are never enough to thank you for all you do. So I've got them positioned. So I've got this one positioned here where I want it. And I'm gonna use some soft suede ink stamp it and then I'm gonna take this out yeah the bird suite is really pretty too and the impression type DSP yes I actually want to play with that this weekend uh, this one goes up here Okay, and then I've got this one lined up so that it will stamp just above it. And you can do it so that it, one is right below the other on the same side of the Stamparatus. But I find that if you do that, because of the excess rubber that's on here, sometimes you can't get them as close as you would like them. So that's why I did them on two separate plates. And then you get this nice, even impression, and it's straight. That's what's so great about the Stamparatus. Okay, so I'm gonna set that aside. And then we can finish decorating our card. Cuckoo for you and Rustic Retreat are going on Mary Liz's first order. I'll have to look those up, but those don't sound familiar, familiar to me. Okay. So I've got my label, which will go on dimensionals. And then I will tuck it so that it's in the center of my card. 
Okay, let's move this up just a little bit. There we go. Okay, and then I'm gonna use some little mini dimensionals on the back of that. So you'll see that this will cover over where I've stamped off of the, sh the label shape. So that's why I wasn't too concerned about where it was stamping. Okay, so like that. And then we've got our leaves. I'm gonna use my bone folder and just curl them up just a little bit just to give them a little bit more dimension. Add a little bit of adhesive behind here. And actually that's right, I cut this off just to, so it wasn't in the way. Add that on there. And then this one I added to the inside. So again, I just curled it up just a little bit and then just tucked it like that. So there we go, they've got the card. And don't those gold little splatters just add a little something? I find that it's it's just a nice little touch. And especially when it's gold like that, when it's embossed, it looks so pretty. Okay, so let's make the envelope now. Okay, let's move this stuff out of the way here. I need my little cheat sheet so I don't forget my measurements. And I'm gonna pull in my stamp and trimmer. Okay, so we are starting with a piece of DSP, or you could use cardstock too, that measures seven inches by eight and a half inches. Okay, and remember this is for a note card size. So I'm hoping that a 12 by 12 piece will be big enough so that you could create a similar style envelope with the, or for a standard size card. But like I said, I will share that another time. Um, okay, what we want to do is we want to score at two and a half inches. So this is my pattern, the, fa the pattern that I want face out. So I've got that face up and I'm going to score it at two and a half inches. And then I'm going to move it over and score it at six and a quarter inches. And remember when you're scoring DSP, DSP is a lot lighter than cardstock. So you don't want to push too hard. Okay, so that was two and a half and six and a quarter. And then I'm going to rotate it and I'm going to do one inch. Oh, I did that wrong. It should have been two and a half and six and a half. I'm looking at the wrong measurements here. Okay, two and a half and six and a half. Okay. And then we're gonna rotate it. I hope this works. <laughs> we're gonna rotate it and we're gonna score it at one inch. And then before we move it, we are gonna do some cutting. So I am going to take it up to the six inch mark on my ruler. And I'm going to put the arrow there and I'm gonna cut down. And then I'm gonna move it up to the two inch mark. and I'm gonna cut up. Okay, then I'm gonna move it over to six and a quarter. So this is where the six and a quarter comes in. I'm gonna move my cutting blade out of the way. I'm going to score, and then I'm gonna do the same thing. So I will cut from six inches down and from two inches up. Okay, now we're done with this. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my scissors and the score line is here. So I'm going to cut just a, about, I don't know, it might be an eighth of an inch at an angle like that. So just trim that bit off. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over here. So it is the smaller line that I want. So remember I made that wrong cut mark. So again, I'm starting about an eighth of an inch in and just cutting that little bit of an angle. And then I'm gonna do the same thing down here. So my score line is here. I'm gonna go about an eighth of an inch in and cut to my cut mark and do the same thing over here 
eighth of an inch in and cut my cut mark. Okay, so now I can fold along all those score lines and use my bone folder. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is, this wider bit is the top, so I'm gonna fold this in, fold this in, which I think I wanna go in this way. So I'm going to put my adhesive down here. So the, on the narrow flap, I'm going to put adhesive just down so that these two bits stick together. And then this, I'm not gonna add adhesive yet, and I'll show you why. I'm just folding it over because I find that you have to kind of readjust after, after you've got those flaps down. There we go. Okay, so now we are going to add these little circly bits because this is how it opens. So it opens like that. So that's what we're gonna create now. So I've got a piece of Grapefruit Grove, which is the color that's in here. And I'm gonna use my half inch circle punch punch out two of those circles. And then I've got a couple brads here, silver brads that I'm going to use. So I'm gonna do the, the top one first. And I'm gonna take, I need my, my paper piercing pad here. Okay, so I'm gonna position this so it's in the center of my flap and I'm gonna use my paper piercer and poke a hole through both layers. I think that looks good. So poke a hole through that, and then I'm gonna put my brad through. But when I separate the ends on the back, I'm gonna do it so it's a little bit on the loose side. I don't want it to be really tight. Okay, and that's, you want some give underneath this circle so that your ribbon will wrap around. Okay, so now for this next one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold that down and figure out my positioning. And I want it, yeah, I think that looks good. So then I'm gonna pick that up and I'm gonna poke through. You don't wanna go, you wanna go through the two layers, but you don't wanna go through the back of your envelope. So, and this is the tricky part. Now you need to separate it. If you have long fingers, you can usually tuck both hands all the way in and reach it. But my short little fingers don't necessarily work well for that. So I'm feeling, and then I'm just using the one hand. I've separated them and now I'm pushing them down. So that's why I suggested leaving it open because then you can feed it in and separate them. Okay, so and remember, again, you don't want it too tight. You want to have that give so that you can add that ribbon. So now I'm gonna add adhesive along my bottom and fold it up just like that. And then we'll add our ribbon. So I'm going to use some linen thread and I'm gonna start by just wrapping it a few times around this one and then I'll go up and around and do that a couple times and then just trim it off. And then you've got, these kind of remind me of those like inter-office envelopes that we used to have before email and um, if you had to transfer documents from office to office. Um, but they're cute little coin envelopes. Uh, and our card is here. So look at that, super cute. I think you're gonna see me make lots of these envelopes because I just, I love them. It's something a little bit different. All right, so thanks so much for watching. If there's anything that you'd like to order and you're in Canada, feel free to visit my website and use the hostess, this code, hostess code for April and I will send you a little something in the mail. All right, so thanks so much for watching and, oh, Mary Liz, yeah. Great minds think alike, hey, inter-office, yeah. Um, so have a great weekend and I will see you next Friday. Take care.